So that's Richard Tafadishi, and welcome to my second mailbag. And as you can see, I've changed up the form a little bit. Uh, I'm going to just give a blank screen for now, but then I'm going to show the questions that I've written down, and then I'm going to use that, that space where I can intersplice whatever footage I need, say it be Empire Total War, Left for Dead, or just myself or whatever, to answer those questions appropriately. So without further ado, let's get to our first question. Alright, the first question is from Ghost. 16,111 and 1. And he says, Hi, where do you find the free survival patch for Left 4 Dead? Can you please send me the link if you get, uh, if you get it? And uh, the free survival patch, it comes directly via Steam. Steam updates it automatically. And as far as I know, there is no other way to get it. So assuming you have Left 4 Dead, Steam or Xbox Live should update it automatically, but I'm not familiar with the Xbox version. I have never played the Xbox version. I only know about the computer version, but there's no, as to my knowledge, there's no other way to get the survival patch besides through Steam, and it should give it to you automatically. Alright, moving right along, we come to Xander42, who asks, If you were, if you had been leading the Nazi army, what would you have done diff? And what I would have done diff if I had been leading the Nazi army is, first of all, okay, well, let's back it up just a little bit before I get into this, because it's, it's a fairly decent question. I like these kind of questions. I think Hitler was hugely overrated. He seemed, he kind of was like a gambler who rolled the dice too many times and eventually lost in the end. But if I had been leading the German army, what I would have done differently? Everything up until France was great, right? Everything, you know, once they took France was great. Then they fought the Battle of Britain. They lost the Battle of Britain. To me, if I... To fight that battle, it would have... Uh, it, I think they could have won eventually. The German production wasn't even in full swing until, you know, midway through the eastern, when they were fighting the eastern front. I think eventually they could have uh, defeated Britain if they, they starved them out long enough. And of course, uh, then there's Russia, and number one rule of warfare is never march on, never march on Moscow. Number two is never hu use your land armies to fight in China. But anyway, um, of course... It, 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 they had, um, as far as I'm concerned, the Russians had that war won before it even started. Uh, um, the only way I could see Hitler really, the Germans really winning that war, was if uh, the, they had the Japanese attack as well and try and attack them from two fronts. Other than that, I really don't think uh, Hitler could have won that war in any sense. And uh, also, so if he was going to invade Russia, that's that's how I would do it. Also, I, of course, uh, I couldn't speak, you couldn't speak for Japan, but if Japan never attacked the United States, the United States would have never entered the war, and the Axis powers might not have been so uh, brutally overwhelmed eventually. So, that's something I would have done differently. And, like I said, just fight on on, on one front, focus on defeating that one enemy first then move on to your next, consolidate those resources, then move on to your next. But, um, I, then again, you know, the Germans didn't have a whole lot of time, so... In essence, I really don't think there is almost any possible way Hitler could have won World War II. And I guess that's my long, convoluted, and contradictory answer. Moving along, Kamachow asks, Will you ever do a Resident Evil 4 Let's Play? No. Alright, Computech2204 asks, Hand grenades or flamethrowers? Open bracket, weapon of pr preference, closed bracket. And, uh, to me, I'm gonna have to go with, um, a hand grenade, because I think flamethrowers are horrendously overrated. Like, uh, if you ever play an FPS game, and you get the flamethrower, it's like the weapon that looks really 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 cool but it's just horribly ineffective and you'll never get as many kills with a flamethrower as you will just using your hand grenades and also in real warfare everyone has a hand grenade and like no one has flamethrowers and putting on that that pack and the gun and, and, and the flame thing and it's just one, it weighs you down and you're sitting duck with that on and if someone shoots you before you get even close enough to use that uh that flamethrower then you're gonna explode and kill everybody around you with a hand grenade it's quick it's easy you throw it and it kills two or three guys 
uh, instantaneously, and that's why the hand grenades are far superior to flamethrowers. Alright, now, Supa Killa, as apparently his name is pronounced, says, Blah blah blah, I don't think World War One would make a fun game. And I only bring this up because I did find a really awesome Flash title, which is a World War One game, and it's called Warfare 1917, and uh, it's really cool, and you guys should probably check it out if you haven't already, and it's it's absolutely free, so don't worry about that, but basically it really uh, sort of portrays what the warfare of that time was all about. And uh, you start off as you either play as the British or the Germans, and you, there's a row of units on the bottom, and you select a squadron of either uh, infantry or machine gunners or officers, or eventually you can, or snipers, eventually you work your way up to tanks, but it is based on this, there's just this plain trench, and, um, you, you either have, oh, sorry, this is just this, like this plain no man's land, and you have either a couple trenches on one side and a couple trenches on the other side, and you can use whatever tactics you, you need, with artillery or mortars, to destroy the other enemy's units in the trench, and then make your units charge up from the trench and try and take theirs, and try to continue to push forward while at the same time defending yours while the enemy's trying to do the same thing. It's really cool. I'm going to give you a link in in the in the video uh over top and I'll put in the information as well. You guys should really check it out. It's probably it's easily the best and if not the only World War One game I've ever played. Alright, moving along, Deviant Nation asks, name some fights you'd like to see on Deadliest Warrior. And I've been thinking a lot about this and actually I saw the season's finale which was um the Irish Republican Army versus the Taliban and the Irish Republican Army won and that pissed me right off because I don't see how that's even possible not to mention that they they named uh, I can't remember I think it was called the Armalite better than the AK-47 and there is no weapon in existence that is better than the AK-47 it's a simple and effective seven pound killing machine that's never going to break never going to jam and always shoot it where and it will always shoot where you need it and want it to and it's just to me it, it's the best gun ever made because it can be produced in so much so um, it just can be produced so massively and anyone can use it even a child can use it and of course they do and it's just it's the simple most beautiful weapon ever created but uh, not enough about how that pissed me off um deadliest warrior fights i'd like to see i really like to see them actually do something in uh the seventeenth century but uh, that'd be kind of hard to do because they kind of either do a man on man or a squad on squad. This would have to be like unit on unit battle with like 150 guys versus 150 guys or something like that. But I don't know. It would be cool if they did something like I, I would say like the the British um, like the British you know Black Watch versus the French Imperial Guard. But they actually met in history, and it's all about um, warriors who didn't meet in history. But I, I can't think of any um, really good battles I'd like to see. I, I can just think of like times where I'd like to see them go to. Um, what what else could they do? Well, they could do. I got I I got They could do something like tanks, like the T thirty four versus the Sherman, or or like you know like vehicles like a Zero Bomber versus a Stuka or something kind of stuff like that would actually be really cool but you know it's supposed to be deadliest warrior and I guess you know tanks and airplanes aren't really warriors but they are you know still driven by human beings so who knows lastly before I wrap this up a fan of thing asks what's with your entire army hanging out in the sidelines while three units of light infantry do all the work and he is in referencing to my 28th part of let's play empire total war where I had three units of line infantry or sorry light infantry kind of do all the com com uh, all the combats in the city and I got a lot of comments about this and basically uh, I did this because I could get more killing power out of one or two units if I manage them effectively and if I just chuck in a horde of all my units uh, I will overwhelm them but I will end up losing more in the end because I can't manage that uh, amount of troops very effectively so I just use one or two units 
to their utmost of efficiency and get the most killing power out of those and um while saving my army in reserve in case I need it and not having them charge and be uh led ineffectively and leading to more losses than I need. Alright guys, one last thing before I go, uh gotta plug it steam groups up. Uh, you guys, see, I'll leave the information in the video. You guys want to join if you want to play Left 4 Dead, or if you want to play Empire with either me or just another bunch of people who want to have a good, fun, clean game. It's uh, I'll leave, it's the NKVD or the Naroni Kamisayet Vino Tornik Diel. Um, gonna leave the information there. Guys, join up. I uh, hope to see you in the hope to see you in the group soon. I hope to be playing with you guys soon. Anyway, this is Joseph. He's running for Salon. Signing off for now, and I'll see you guys later.